In the recently few hundred years, over 800 ships have been wrecked along the south coastline of Australia. Rain and storms, accompanied by gale force winds, have sculpted the landscape in a dynamic cycle of life and death. Beaten by ancient furious waves, this stretch of the coast of Victoria shows the power of the Southern Ocean. Around 20 million years old limestone cliffs are at the mercy of nature, a sight to behold. We are on the Great Ocean Road, the adventure begins here. The Great Ocean Road is located on the southwest of Victoria, between the towns of Torquay and Warrnambool, halfway from Melbourne to Adelaide. The undisputed attraction is the Twelve Apostles, a collection of limestone rock stacks jutting from the water in Port Campbell National Park. Wild and powerful waves of the Southern Ocean constantly pound the coastline, which has shaped the area into what we see today. Twelve apostles have been created many millions of years ago by constant erosion of the limestone cliffs of the mainland. The stormy southern ocean and blasting winds gradually eroded the limestone, forming caves in the cliffs. The caves eventually became arches and, when they collapsed, rock stacks up to 45 meters high were left isolated from the shore. Sunrise and sunset offer particularly impressive views, as the apostles change color from dark to brilliant sandy yellow under a full sunny day. The Twelve Apostles is at the center of one of the most spectacular stretches of coastline in the world. A few kilometers west is located the Loch Ard Gorge, named after the ship Loch Ard that ran aground on nearby Muttonbird Island in 1878. Here the salvaging depicted by artist Frederick Bruford. The gorge is V-shaped, has a small entrance and a beach accessible to tourists. It is impossible to walk these trails and not be moved by the powers of nature that have shaped it. On the east of the gorge lies Island Archway, with the characteristic stumps surrounded by walls and a spectacular scenery. Still more to the east is Razor Wall, with a vast mixture of features created and daily chased by the power of the sea.
Mutton Bird Island, where Loch Ard wrecked, is named after the thousands of mutton birds breeding there every year in summer. In the same area, on the west of Loch Ard Gorge are Thunder Cave and Broken Head. In this premises is found the Rufus bristlebird, a threatened species restricted to these coastal shrublands and woodlands with dense understory. Spring is here and even in these harsh environments, plants explode with blossoms. Going west on the road, there are still more wonders. The arch. London Bridge, now called London Arch since the bridge to land disappeared in a storm. The power of the seas is evident here. The grotto is a sinkhole geological formation, a big natural pool perfectly enclosed in the cliff side. Waves crashing into the wall splashing mist over. We conclude our visit to the area exploring Triplet Falls and Hopetown Falls in Otway National Park. Opal is the national gemstone of Australia, which produces 95% of the world's supply. This is not by chance. Opal is formed from a solution of silicon dioxide and water, in a process that started over 100 million years ago, when a great area was covered by the sea. It is this area of 1.7 million square kilometers forming actually the biggest artesian basin in the world, that opal began to surface some 10 million years ago, and that now is known as the vastest opal field mine in the world. The biggest producer is South Australia and Cuba Pedder the main mining town, with 80% of the total gems. The name Cuba Pedder is generally believed to be a corruption of Australian Aboriginal words Cooper Pity, meaning something like white men's holes, referring to the digging to get the opals. The extreme cold in winter and the extreme hot in summer, more the latter, made the miners build a whole new lifestyle in burrows dug underground. Mining and dwelling underground is not precisely the best way of living. The old timers mine, today a museum and shop, portrays both the mining and how the people lived on the 20th century, idealized for tourists. Life should have been very tough, with the only hope of getting rich with a fluke. Today, besides the mining activity, done principally by big companies, the town has embraced a tourism as the main income. Hotels underground are a great attractive, something one cannot miss getting there. Underground churches are architectonic marvels, especially the Catholic and Serbian. Property is sold as holes, you buy it and put your furniture in. The real marvels of the area are the breakaways, 32 km northeast of Kuba Pedi. Colorful low hills which from a distance seem to have broken away from the Stewart Range, hence their name, the breakaways. There are two lookout points which highlight the open spaces, 
leaving an impression of the long gone inland sea that our early explorers dreamt of. But 200 million years later, the color of the minerals deposited on it, and further erosion after the sea retired, produced this fantastic landscape with white, yellow, ochre, and brown tones. Castle or salt and pepper can be seen in an easterly direction. As the day goes by, the passing of the sun changes the desert colors, creating photogenic scenes that appear surreal. The desert-like moonscape with its fossilized shells has been nicknamed the Moon Plain and has been used as a stage for many films. We continue to the Northern Territory. A stop at Alice Springs allows us to visit some of the resident fauna, very well displayed in a sanctuary. The Australian Ringneck. The Spinifex Pigeon. The Western Bowerbird. The Splendid Fairy Wren. The Dusky Grass Wren. The Pied Honey Eater The Grey-Crowned Babbler The Cinnamon Quail Thrush We wake up with a splendid sunrise and continue on to pass through the Devil's Marbles, Kalu Kalu, to the land's Aboriginal traditional owners. A nationally and internationally recognised symbol of Australia's outback, gigantic rounded granite boulders, some spectacularly poised. The physical and chemical action of the elements has sometimes strange ways to show their action. Finally, we arrive to Catherine Gorge. This is rugged outback country with deep rainforests, rocky cliffs and escarpments, and the water habitat of unique birds and other animals. The gorges were carved by the Catherine River, the first river we encountered with some flow of water since we started to travel north from Adelaide. In this time of year, October, there are neither rapids nor waterfalls, the gorges are separated by rocky areas, and we must move from one boat to another upriver. Its name was changed from Catherine National Park to Nitmaluk, when ownership of the land returned to the Jawoin people, its traditional owners. Nitmaluk means cicada dreaming, which figures prominently in Jawoin cultural history. The slow-running water allows a pleasant stroll along its trajectory, making the most of the landscapes created by nature.
Australia's Aborigines are the oldest civilization in the world, they have been here for 60,000 years. The Red Centre is the land of the Anangu people. They are the traditional owners of Ulurukata Tutor and the land around. For them, this is a very special place. The Anangu law, Chukurpa, is the foundation of all Anangu people's life and society. It's the basis of relationships between people, plants, animals and the land. For Anangu people, this isn't just a rock, it's a living place. Uluru and Katatuta are located in the Northern Territory, in the centre of Australia, the Red Centre, 450 km southwest of Alice Springs. Uluru is actually part of a huge underground rock formation that also includes Katatuta, the Olgas, 35 km to the west, and Atala Mount Connor, a Mesa tableland approximately 100 kilometers to the east of Uluru. With a history of more than 600 million years, Uluru, Katatuta and Atala were part of a huge, high mountain range, now eroded into a desert, Uluru tilted 90 degrees. From a distance, Uluru looks smooth and featureless, but up close, its face is weather-beaten pitted with holes and gashes, ribs, valleys and caves. To Anangu, these features are related to the journeys and actions of ancestral beings across the landscape. Katatuta, the Anangu name for the collection of domes, means many heads. The result of weathering and erosion wore away the rocks to produce the rounded domes we see today. Hear the spectacular colors on a sunset. This is the Angu legend about this sacred land. The world was once a featureless place. None of the places we know existed until creator beings, in the forms of people, plants and animals, traveled widely across the land. Then, in a process of creation and destruction, they formed the landscape as we know it today. 
and England is still inhabited by the spirits of dozens of these ancestral creator beings. Being such an attracting monument, hikers and aficionados cannot resist the temptation to climb Uluru. Angu do not climb Uluru because of its great spiritual significance. They request that visitors do not climb the rock, partly due to the path crossing a sacred traditional Dreamtime track, and also due to a sense of responsibility for their safety. Meanwhile, let's enjoy the colors of Uluru at sunset. <laughs>